All right, so a relatively new beekeeper asked me, how do I know it's the fall honey flow? And if you can remember just a week or so ago, all the bees were just kind of like hanging out at the front, bearded up, midday. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon now. Look how they're like flying in and out with, you can see the pollen on their legs. They're kind of like zipping in and out. There's not really any bearding. And they don't care that you're standing there. If it's during a dearth and you walk up to a beehive, you will almost certainly have a couple of bees bump you in the head or bump you in a body to let you know to get away. But these bees don't care that I'm here and you can see them bringing in lots of pollen. Every one of my hives are that way. You can go over to any of them. Those are fanning obviously, but there's a lot of action, a lot of bees bringing in pollen water nectar jesus plant growing right in front of the entrance let's go over to the next hive This is what you're going to see no matter what hive you go to on my property. I'm kind of in the backyard, back apiary right now, what I call the back apiary. You can just see a lot of activity. Bees going in and out of the hive. They don't care that you're there. You see them bringing in pollen, nectar. Now, the difference between a so-so honey flow in a great honey flow, there's some weeds there I'm gonna actually pull out. I don't really like this stuff blocking the entrances. But it don't matter which hive you go to, you see bees coming and going. They don't care that you're there. They're not headbutting me. They're not bumping me. Because their focus right now is bringing in resources. Hive inspections, a week or two ago, you wouldn't have dared do a hive inspection not wearing a bee suit. Now you could probably do it without a bee suit. They don't care you're there. It don't matter which hive you go to, they're all the same. I'm not gonna show you the front hives, but again, I'm standing right a foot away from this entrance. They don't care that I'm here. They're not bumping me. They don't. They're flying in and out. They're bringing in resources. This is midday. This morning, it was even more activity. There weren't hardly any bees in front of the entrance. They were all out foraging. Now the foragers are starting to come back because the temperatures are getting up close to 95 degrees. So that's how you know there's a fall honey flow. What do you do during a fall honey flow? You stop feeding and you put your honey supers on just in case. In northern Kentucky, some years we have a weak honey flow, some years we have a strong honey flow, and it really boils down to how much rain we get. The sad thing about it is you can get too much rain, which means the bees can't be out foraging, bringing in resources, so you don't really get a lot of honey. You can get too less of rain, which means there's just not high nectar count nectar flow in the plants so the bees don't have any nectar to bring in and then you can get just right and if it's a just right year you can easily put on several supers in the fall most years and i'm saying like uh let's see i started here in 2016 so it's been seven years in seven years, I had one year that required more than one honey super. And maybe this will be the second year that I require more than one honey super. It's been a, it was a great spring flow. I can only hope we have the same thing for the fall. Because uh, that'd be great. 
you know the the queen's already laying less eggs and larvae in preparation for winter they're already kicking out the drones i see a lot of people think they think that like the honey flow stops in july and you pull the honey supers on july 4th and the next day all the drones are gone and the honey flow is over but that's that's really it's almost comical to see the posts in some of these groups on facebook don't do splits right now the queen's done booted out all the drones well no i generally find that drones at least for me in northern kentucky i also have drones all the way up mid-october it's when those nights start getting down below 50 degrees that the queens are like ah, you got to go but uh, for me at least i got drones all the way up to mid-october so yeah the honey flow for me the strong you know the stronger honey flow started actually about a week ago we were really only in a dearth in northern kentucky for me about four or five days i had four or five days where at one o'clock in the afternoon all the fronts of my hives were just hundreds of thousands of bees bearded up on the front because it was so hot they wasn't moving they wasn't bringing anything in or out i think i fed them one quart each of my new hives which would be all of these back here all got one quart of sugar syrup and that's all they got that was for that four or five days now my stronger hives up front didn't get any sugar syrup they had shoot 60 pounds of honey in their second deep not to say they were totally backfilling it yet because that would have been bad for the fall but you kind of got to keep an eye on that I, I made a post not too long ago that the timing of putting your honey supers on makes or breaks you and kind of like what i've learned over the years if they've started backfilling the second deep they'll never go into that top super they'll just keep on back flowing that deep and when they get it back flowed they're done kind of like they know that's all we need we're done so uh i try to as soon as i see them when they got you know more than their outer frames filled with honey i put the supers on and you know it's just by luck that they were already at that point literally when the dirt started so i didn't have to feed the front yards and all honesty i only feed bees during a dearth for two reasons one i want them to draw out comb two the two outer frames and their brood boxes don't have any resources that's the only times i feed them if they got resources in those two outer frames and it's a new hive i just i don't feed them i keep an eye on them but i don't feed them and that's kind of like the tip that i'll give you now whether or not it works for you or not i don't know but that's kind of what's worked for me historically over the years I think my cat just got stung because he just high-tailed it out of here. <laughs> he, he was back here with me. He likes to sniff around the front of the entrances. Usually don't work out too well for him, but he never learns. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Thanks for watching.